Hello everyone, it's me Munali again with a new lesson for you all on the topic cell. So first of all, I would like to welcome you all in this video lesson with a very big heart. In today's lesson, we are going to look at the topics cell as an introduction, cell theory and also variation in cell. So let's get started. Children, cell is called as the basic structural and functional unit of life. It is basic structural unit because the body structure of living organisms is made up of cell itself. Functional unit because all the life sustaining activities are being performed inside the cell itself. Now I want you all to imagine trees growing in the forest, the fish in the river or in an aquarium in your room, the birds in the sky, a lion in the jungle, a worm in the swell and your classmate sitting next to you. In fact, all these things that I have mentioned just now or any other living organism present on this planet is made up of cell. So, cell is also called as the building block of life. Let's move ahead and discuss about the discovery of the cell. So it was in the year 1665 when Robert Hooke, an English scientist and also the author of the famous book Micrographia, observed a thin slice of dry cork with the help of his self-made microscope and found that it was made of numerous chambers just like a honeycomb. These chambers reminded him of the tiny rooms or cellula occupied by monks in the monastery. He named these chambers as cells. But the chambers which were observed by Robert Hooke were actually the cell walls of the cork cells. Here in this picture you can uh, observe the Robert Hooke's microscope. Robert Hooke used actually two lenses for achieving great magnification and such microscopes were later known as the compound microscopes. Children, as the cork had dead cells, he could not see what lies inside the living cells. Later in the year 1674, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, a Dutch microscopist or lens maker, who is also known as the father of microbiology, discovered the free living cells in pond water with his self-made simple microscope. Actually, Antony van Leeuwenhoek was the person who ground lenses and made microscopic observations as a hobby. He is said to have constructed almost 400 microscopes and basically all his microscopes consisted of a single biconvex lens and that is why they were called as the simple microscopes. Further in 1831, Robert Brown, a Scottish botanist, discovered the nucleus in the cells of orchid root. J. Purkinje, a Czech physiologist, in 1839 coined the term protoplasm for the semi-fluid substance present in the cell. Let's discuss about cell theory. Children, the German botanist 
M. J. Shildin and the German physiologist Theodor Schwann first propounded the cell theory in 1839 out of their parallel but independent studies of tissues of plants and animals. Later on, the cell theory was further expanded by Rudolf Virchow, a German biologist in 1855, by giving the concept omnis cellula e cellula, which means that all cells arise from pre-existing cells only by cell division. So we can summarize cell theory as all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. Cells are the basic structural and functional unit of life or all living organisms. All cells arise from pre-existing cells only by cell division. The first two postulates were given on the basis of the researches made by Shildon and Swan, whereas the third postulate was added by the Rudolf Virchow. Now children, cells can vary extremely in number, shape and size. Let's start with variation in number. Single celled organisms. When an organism consists of only one cell, it is called a single celled organism or unicellular organisms. We can have examples like amoeba, paramecium, euglena, etc. In these organisms, all life sustaining activities such as respiration, reproduction, etc., are performed by the single cell itself. Next comes the category of few-celled organisms which are made up of just few cells only. We can have examples like Spirogyra, Volvox, etc. Now is the turn of the higher organisms which are also called as the multicellular organisms and they are made up of many cells. Examples, plants, animals, human beings, etc. In these organisms, each cell performs a specialized function. Now remember, even the life of a multicellular organism starts from a single cell called as zygote, which is formed by the union of male and female gametes. Later on, division takes place and ultimately the multicellular organisms are formed. Variation in shape. The shape of the cell vary greatly. These may be disc-like, polygonal, rectangular, cuboidal, thread-like, branched or sometimes irregular also. These shapes of cells are often related to the type of functions which they perform. Here in this diagram, you can see different shapes of cells present in human body. Here you can find that human red blood cells are circular and biconcave to pass through narrow capillaries and transport oxygen. White blood cells are amoeboid in nature, means they show amoeba-like movement with the formation of pseudopodia so that they can squeeze out of the capillary walls. Nerve cells are long to conduct impulse from distant parts of the body to the brain and vice versa. Muscle cells are long and contractile to pull or squeeze the parts. Similarly, even the cells present in the plant body vary in shapes. Guard cells of a stomatal pore in the leaves are bean shaped to open and close the pore. Variation in size. Always remember that size of the cell has nothing to do with the size of the organism. 
it is just the number of cells will which vary if the organism is larger in size it means the number of cells will be greater smallest cell in the world which has been known so far is pplo or mycoplasma pplo stands for pleuronemonia like organisms which can be 0.1 to 1 micrometers largest cell known so far is the egg cell of ostrich which is 170 mm in diameter so children that's all for this video lesson i will be back with a new lesson soon till then take care keep smiling keep learning bye bye